the day is coming when we'll stop tapping on a keyboard or moving a mouse to complete a search. Say hello to visual search. I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is Kavita Bala. She is the chair of computer science at Cornell and founder and chief scientist at Grokstyle. Welcome, Kavita. Thanks for having me. So can you give us an overview of Grok Style and the story behind it? Absolutely. So Grok Style came out of research I was doing with my student, Sean Bell. He was my PhD student, and we'd been working on the problem of understanding images for a long time, understanding materials, understanding what people see in them. And while we were doing that, we realized one big problem was we were looking at a lot of designer photos of, of people showing pictures of their homes, and we realized that one big question that people often have, consumers online who are looking at these photos, is what is that thing I'm seeing in it? And so Grokstyle came to solve that problem of what, what is called visual search, or uh, technically it's also called fine grain recognition, where when you see something in the picture, you recognize what it is. Now, recognition itself, there's a broad version of recognition, which is that if you see a chair in a picture, you say, that's a chair. Human beings are very good at that. You can always tell something's a chair or a table. And in fact, computers, you know, until recently weren't very good at that. And they started getting better using deep learning technology, which is this revolution that's been going on in artificial intelligence right now. But the kind of recognition we do in Grok style goes actually one step deeper. Not only do we recognize something as a chair, but we recognize exactly which chair it is. So is it an Eames chair or is it a Poang chair? That goes to a very fundamental problem that in fact human beings are not good at. We can recognize something's a chair, but we typically don't know what kind of chair it is. And so what's interesting about this technology is it brings expert level designer knowledge. Somebody who's really in that business would know or be able to recognize these things. We now make that available to a random consumer on their cell phone. They snap a picture of something and we'll tell them exactly what it is. So that was sort of the core technology that has formed the base of Grok style and we've gone from there. So what are the benefits of visual search? So the biggest thing I think is, as I said, it goes to actually understanding an expert. It gives you an expert level of understanding. There are many domains. Most of us, when you furnish your house every once in a while, which is once in a, you know, in a few years, you're not going to go and bother to try to remember the catalog of things that are out there. You have some sense of what you like and what you don't like. And ideally, you would have the computer then provide solutions for you. So firstly, you don't know everything that's out there. The second thing is most of us, at least I certainly feel that way, are style challenged. We don't actually feel comfortable making big ticket purchases without having some idea of some designer helped us pick it out. And the, in fact, the way we handle our style challenges, often we go and just buy boring things so that we know to go with everything. And then when you get stuck with this sort of very boring combinations at home, you're not particularly happy. You spend all this money and now you have a very blah looking house, but you're not thrilled with it. So one of the reasons we created Grok Style is we wanted to help people sort of get this designer level quality of decisions that they can get by just using a phone to look up, you know, to search for things. You take a picture of something, we'll tell you what it is. We also recommend what goes with it. So you'd look at, you see some uh, chair you like, you go to a cafe, you like a chair. We'll show you what that chair is. We'll also show you a variety of tables and lamps and other things that will go with it so that you can go home and plop it down and then you have a complete sort of designer approved version of a very stylistic living room or, or kitchen. So how does the technology actually work? I mean, what role does artificial intelligence play in its process? Absolutely. So there's deep learning is the core technology that we are using and deep learning was actually, it's been a technology that's been around from the late 80s, but it did not really take off till 2012 when this revolution happened. And the reason it didn't take off is because for deep learning to work, you have these networks, these neural networks that are supposed to understand the data that's coming in. Uh, the neural networks used to be very small because we didn't have enough compute in, in the 80s. And the neural networks didn't have enough data because we didn't have the internet back then uh, with all of the information that's out there. Deep learning sort of hit its stride just five years ago, and now since then has basically changing every aspect of, I think, modern technology, whether it's fintech or um, self-driving cars, or in this case, retail. 
uh, because now we have enough data. We have photographs of everything out there in the world. We have really large compute through these GPUs or these graphics processing units. So GPUs can crunch through a lot of computation. And that data and compute, and of course, new algorithmic innovations together have made sort of deep learning the technology that can do this kind of recognition. So our visual search uses deep learning and it takes all of this data, it takes these designer data of different pieces of furniture, crunches on it, in fact, in our original learning algorithm, and this was actually a paper we published at SIGGRAPH a few years ago in 2015. SIGGRAPH is the, is the main graphics and vision conference. And we published this paper that then became the core of Grokstyle's technology uh, that we computed for two weeks where we trained the network to recognize different product images in our visual search algorithm. And two weeks later, we then had a network, what's a neural network that you can then use to recognize on the fly any new, any new piece of furniture that you see. You launched in this spring, I think March actually. What surprises or challenges have you had? I mean, what's changed since the launch? Yeah, so I can talk about that. We had our first public launch with IKEA uh, in their augmented reality application. And they, this was, they had the augmented reality piece, and, but we added the visual search in them. So I'll just give a sort of a quick summary. What does the augmented reality app do? It's, a, it's very fun. Of course, a company like IKEA really cares about people buying furniture that fits in their home. So the augmented reality part comes in you walking around with a camera in your own home. You see all the furniture that's out there and you want to get new furniture, see that it fits, see that it looks good, etc. So they build a piece around plopping down furniture from their catalog and then trying to show how it looks by rendering sort of their 3D models that they have. Our piece was to add the visual search. So imagine you walk into a room, you take a picture of a, a, a chair or a lamp, we'll tell you exactly what it is. So you can think about, gee, it's getting old, I want to replace it. So now I know what it is, so I can go and replace it. And, uh, and in our first launch, that's what we released. Since then, we actually have even developed a recommendation system. So not only will we recognize the lamp or the chair, we'll then be able to show you, and this other side table goes along with it, you should pair them up together and add that. And in fact, we recently, a week ago, had a launch of the recommendations based on our, our visual search with Temple and Webster, which is an Australian retailer of furniture. So why the retail industry? I mean, are there any other verticals that, that this might work? That's, that's a great question. So we started off actually with retail and with furnishings, but we've actually developed uh, demos right now for fashion, where again, you know, recognizing items of clothing and then pairing items of clothing is a very, very interesting domain. And we focused on furniture and fashion because we think both of them have this pro property of being very visual. You care about the appearance and the style of the things you buy because the aesthetics of it matters. You're going to live, live with it in the case of furniture for long periods of time. In the case of fa fashion, you're projecting on a, an image of how you look to the rest of the world. You care deeply about what that is. And so essentially, we pick these two domains that are deeply visual and style oriented domains. And that's why, and Grok style is about understanding style. And that's sort of why we got into the domain. So what are you trying to learn? I believe, is that project called Street Style? Yeah, so that's a research project that's uh, done at Cornell University with my collaborators, Noah Snavely and Kevin Matson, who was a student and now has graduated. That was a, a, a project that was on understanding fashion. And that's a very exciting, so I can uh, describe a little bit about how, how that works and then how I see all of these connecting up. But in street style, the question we were asking was, we live in a, in a world where everybody's posting selfies of themselves, showing off how they look, how they dress. And yet we don't really have an understanding of how people around the world dress. We do, I mean, by, and by, I, by me saying, I don't think we understand it. I mean, if I asked you, well, how do you think people dress right now in... Uh, you know, England, you might have some guesses, but you don't actually know it. But we have this rich treasure trove of information through selfies and through social media photo collections. And so the question we wanted to ask was, can we understand how people dress? So what we did is we took all these um, social media photographs of people around the world and we analyzed them. So again, we use deep learning algorithms to recognize what people are wearing in these pictures. What's the shirt they're wearing, what kind of hat, what kind of uh, glasses are they wearing? And then we sort of 
cl clustered these, what we were finding together so that we could find groupings of people and what they wear. So for example, we find one group of people wearing, you know, the black shirt and the blue jeans. And it turns out that's a look that's actually shared across the world. Everybody dresses like that. There will be some specific clusters that we found that are specific to particular parts of the world. So for example, a sari, for example, will pop out as being more representative of you know, India and countries there. Bright pinks are more common in countries there. If we went and we analyzed LA, we will find sort of the little black dress. We'll find people with baseball hats. So we were able to find what is very distinctive of each of these cities that sort of represent the look of that city. And I think if you have visited these places, you'll immediately recognize it. But this gives you a tool to analyze how these places look without visiting them, which we thought was very exciting. You stated that you gathered this data off of social media. So what are the privacy implications? Did the so, Instagram users or social media users know they were involved? So these were all the photos that were only publicly, they, they marked as being public. We did not touch any private data at all. And that was right. We assumed that that was acceptable. It was in keeping with the the designation they gave to it. So you've you've used this in retail. Obviously, you're looking at style implications. How does Gork Style allow for a personalized experience? How do you make it personal? So as we so we are actually starting to work on more uh, personalization. Our first step was, as I said, going back to the claim that I made earlier, where we are very style challenged. What I wanted to be able to do is offer up something that I like and then find things that go with it that are based on designer preferences. So if a designer chooses to pair a table and a chair or two items of clothing, I wanted to wear that initially. Over time, what we're doing is we're also recognizing style clusters. So the idea would be, I know that I happen to have a pre preference for a more edgy style or a more conservative style, and we can use that to personalize. So that's sort of the path we're going along and we're developing personalization tools within these recommendations. So the recommendations will be in keeping with my personal tastes. How is visual search technology services evolving? I mean. What are other promising cases and, and are consumers ready for this technology? That's a very good question. And I, you know, it's something that, you know, we'll find out with time. I think, so in 99, when Google first started text search, you know, in the early days, people were doing some searches and they were good or sometimes they were not so great, but it started to take off then. I increasingly believe that the camera as a fundamental interface is clearly part, part of our future. So in the next five years, we're going to be, in fact, even now when I go to a party, I don't bother to take down information anymore. I just take pictures of things that I like. If I see somebody's name tag, I take a picture of it. I don't write it down. Any place I'm out there, if I like something I see, I just take a picture of it. So I think increasingly using the camera as the way we used to record information is going to become just second nature to all of us. We already use voice when we are driving and then all the time, and we're going to use cameras in the same way. So I do believe that visual search is going to become a core part of how we interact with, with data and information going forward. And we'll see the adoption as people get more comfortable with it. And as the, as the tools get better, that's available to them. So as most new technology comes, uh, comes along, we get excited about it. Uh, but there's often something that we, sh we haven't thought of or, or maybe we should think about. So what are some of the concerns you might have regarding inappropriate use of this technology? What do we need to be aware of? So interestingly enough, uh, actually inappropriate is not so much of a problem in this case for the following reason. You take a picture of something and then we find you the closest match in a catalog. And the catalog is basically, in the case of a retailer, what they want to sell. And it's not inappropriate per se, it happens to be their merchandise. Now, if, depending on the catalog, you can decide whether some, some retailers sell inappropriate stuff, but that is, of course, their choice to make. Um, I think what is interesting, uh, you, you, things that surprise you or might surprise you, and that's why I believe they should be actually integrated into the AI algorithms. When we talked about personalization, one of the big problems I have personally is I can settle into a very conservative style, style that I dress myself up in every day. And this is actually boring. So one of the problems with being too true to personalization or too true to somebody's intent is that they don't actually get the excitement of trying something different. One of the reasons I think people like shopping is because they see something that they didn't expect. 
So partly adding that element of surprise in AI so that the AI doesn't actually always, right now when AI does things that is unexpected, it's actually because it's not working very well. Uh, we need the AI to do unexpected things to catch us by surprise, the way creative ideas will catch us by surprise. And so I, to me, I think that's the, that's the thing that people always should keep in mind when they're designing new AI systems, particularly for people, is to keep that element of surprise and, and sort of discovery that people really think is important to their happiness. Well, I'm excited for the day that we will uh, stop tapping on buttons and all search will be <laughs> verbal and visual. And I hope yeah. that you're making that happen. That's, that's the hope, yes. Kavita Bala, Chair of Computer Science at Cornell and Founder and Chief Scientist at Grok Style. Welcome and thanks so much uh, again for joining. If somebody wants to connect with you, how can they go about doing that? Uh, email kb at grokstyle.com or kb at cs.cornell.edu. Both work. And uh, yeah, we can go from there. Thanks again. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And you guys can find more of my interviews right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic, or maybe find me by going to tanyahall.net. I've got links to all my social sites, and I hope to hear from you. Thanks for watching.